Sarah's. Welcome to Penacone, honored guest. Back in this familiar room. This way, darling. What's wrong? Are you not feeling well? <laughs> That's good then. I know you're more sensitive to memoria, thus more easily affected by the dreamscape than others. This is also why I have to accompany you. I shall use my methods to relieve you. Don't worry, as your companions are safe. I had both of them each give me a trinket before I entered the dream. This will allow me to feel their presence in the memory zone. They're already awake in their rooms. Will you be comfortable in following me now? Time waits for no one. We must hurry to the lobby. March's room is this way. I should go meet up with her. I know what you're thinking, but alas, that girl isn't in there, and neither is this her room. The moment you stepped into the memory zone, reality's building structures lost all meaning. I can sense that she is in a faraway place right now. In the meantime, if we want to find that lobby the navigator mentioned, we'll have to try a little harder. These poor little things stumbling about. Strange. There appears to be someone else's presence here. Ah! Uh, Purr! How is this possible? Are there... no staff members here at all? Huh? What are you doing here? Yes, she's the memo keeper I mentioned. We'll have to cut the banter short. Let's first work together and remove these overly friendly children, shall we? I'm indebted to you both for your help. You chose the wrong end. Grace and elegance. Existence is unity. And 
every petal and let all will be swept away by the wind. <sighs> Finally, some peace and quiet. What are the two of you doing here? We could ask you the same thing. It's a long story. I fortuitously, as he should remember, became friends with some of the Bloodhounds and was helping them track down a wanted criminal. Except I ended up here for some reason. You aren't hiding anything, are you? Hiding? I don't think I'd be capable of that in front of a memo keeper. Your arrival is timely. This dreamscape is fraught with danger. Since our destination is the same, how about we join forces? I can protect you from harm, but in the memory zone I'll need assistance from the memo keeper as well. And if we run into the family, it wouldn't hurt to have one more person to explain the situation. Hmm. What do you think? Thank you. I'm truly grateful. Glad to be traveling with you again, Miss Black Swan. Hmm. I truly hope so. These trifles are of no use to me. <sighs> this room. Why is it upside down? The memory zone is constantly shifting its form. Looks like we'll have to think of a way to walk on the ceiling. We're standing on the ceiling right now. Miss Acheron's words speak sense. Regardless, we have to reach that flat surface hanging overhead. And we're not scaling the pillar, of course. I'll teach everyone some traversal tricks used in the memory zone.
Eternal. Try harder. Convert and awaken. In lunar flame. Concern yourself with the outcome. Concern yourself with the outcome. Mere worldly possessions. <laughs> Existence is unity. Together as one. No matter. Eternal. 
dead end. You're natural, aren't you? You're a prodigy at remembrance. These are nice trinkets, but nothing more. There's an elevator here, just like in the lobby. We should be able to reach our destination with it. But the memory zone up ahead appears to be severely twisted. Be careful, everyone.
See? I told you it wasn't going to be that simple. Where is this? locked too. There's no end to this. Let me try. This memory zone is overly twisted. I have to use an elegant method, so you two, please give me a little time. Hmm. Got it. I can see the core of this dreamscape. And there are members of the family. And some figures trying to find their way forward. It appears that your friends aren't faring too well. One. Two. Three. Wait. Three. There's a third person seeking the way to the lobby. Wait. It's... the girl who was with you. It eludes me, but there is a known semblance in the memory zone, mirroring the essence she radiates. What reason does she have to delve so deep into the dreamscape? She... is she running? No. Running away? Something's right behind her. This is not good. Everyone, we must hurry. There's no time. I'll just have to break the rules and use some methods to help you phase through the memory zone. I picked up slivers of her thoughts in the memory zone. These will help you form an impression of her. Now, you must hang on to these thoughts with all your might and shape them in your mind. I caught some very familiar memories just now. Hurry, through here.
You all right? Look at me. Calm down. Deep breaths. All right? Allow me. Relax. You'll be fine. I'm really sorry, but I have to leave for a short while. Death still hovers about, and I must personally ensure Miss Himiko and Miss March 7th's safety, and warn them. I'll leave him to you, Miss Acheron. I'm sorry for what happened. I was too focused on that girl and got sloppy. It was my hesitation that caused her to lose her life. I'm sorry. But if in that moment I chose to draw my blade, <sighs> sorry, I, I had no choice. Yes, we will. But not yet. Before the hunt, we should keep our eyes peeled and consider where the true enemies are hiding and how to fight them. Do not let pain dictate your thoughts. Compose yourself and you will walk the right path. Once, someone said to me, no compassion for the enemy, for that is cruelty upon yourself. But you must see clearly who the true enemy is. And then, with one swing of your blade, you must understand its meaning and the price you pay. This is the only advice I have for you, from someone burdened with a blood debt. I'm back. Miss Himiko has something to tell you. There's good news and bad news. Which is why I must undertake Miss Himiko's request and bring both of you back to reality. I'm glad to see that you're fine. Let us reach a safe place before speaking again. Miss Black Swan, do you not intend to open some sort of teleporter? Mm, I don't recommend that. His mental state is unstable, so we have to avoid any rough traversal methods like just now. Also, while we're departing, we can still do more for Miss Firefly, can't we? Some remnants of her presence linger nearby. Seize the chance to etch them into your remembrance before they're gone. If we can start investigating on the way, that'd be good. Let's go. We have to find another path. Sorry, but could you give me a few more minutes? I, um, I have some unfinished business. May death be the end of your boundless dream, guiding you back to the waking world.
Let's go. This way. Follow me. You chose the wrong Existence is unity. All will be swept away by the wind. Convert and awaken. Enjoy yourself. Later, Nathan. going on? Why is it getting hot in the Memoria? You've noticed it too. Like, something is burning. Concern yourself with the outcome.
These trifles are of no use to me. These are all charred remains. They're still smoldering. The culprit can't have gotten far. I suppose we can slow down for now then. like this monster was slain by a thermic weapon. possessions. Looks like this monster died of a... Something's off. These traces are fresh. Someone just left the scene. Would this person have anything to do with what's happened just now? I cannot reach a conclusion with so few clues. Just listen to your gut. You were the one who said that... The remembrance doesn't lie. From the memories of these carcasses, that person was tall and much stronger than an adult male. The method was clean and crisp. All one strike kills. Maybe a mercenary or an assassin. He entered through the door from the lobby and went farther into the hotel. If that's the case, he should have seen everything that happened here. I take back what I said. We have to hurry to that memory zone where Miss Firefly's presence was imprinted. Considering what this person can do, if his goal is that place as well, there won't be anything left there. You two this way. I'll try to create a stable shortcut for you. On leaving the lobby, the structure has become chaotic. Phase is...
not concern yourself with the outcome. Look, upon leaving the lobby, the structure has become chaotic. Phase through that corridor and be careful. Do not alert the meme. room then yes more precisely it's right below exactly what it means down you too may not be able to phase through physical structures like memo keepers but I've got a great idea that will help you safely reach the floor right below this room it's really easy see the chandelier Next, we want to create some reasonably small movements. Still remember what I taught you? Feel the flow of the memoria, walk up the wall, and then get close to it. Concern yourself with the outcome. You! The dead return! Eternal. I'm going to awaken. Blade of you. <laughs> Do not concern yourself with the outcome. Existence is unity. 
all will be swept away by the wind. Oh. Oh. I underestimated you. Receive divinity. Oh. I underestimated you. You chose the wrong Existence is unity. The lunar flame. Later, me. Trifles are of no use to me. Eternal. You can't 
not kill me. Together as one. Slay the In lunar flame. be swept away by the wind.
Do not concern yourself with the outcome. Solitary chain. Go say hello to it. Look, it's common sense and easy, right? Are we jumping down from here? Don't worry. I'll do something about it. Let me stack the dream bubbles to give everyone a nice soft landing. Okay, here we go. We landed safely. This is amazing. Don't imitate the memo keeper without the accompaniment of one. Well, wouldn't it be lovely if these nosy newcomers found their way back home? All will be swept away by the wind. Enjoying yourself? Together as one! Disturb us now. Here, how about I show you a little magic trick?
No one will dis- Are you ready? <laughs> Don't be too surprised. Is that... Firefly? Yes. It's what this room left behind. The memories of her. The slight trembling of the ground. The fleeting reflections on the screen. The flow of memoria. I gathered and reproduced them in fragments. As for the context, we'll need to sort that out a bit. Hurry along now. Recreating memories on this scale takes quite a toll on me. She mentioned... your name. Thinking of you even in your absence. Seems like you two were pretty close. She seems to be sharing her discovery with someone. And... it's related to the Watchmaker. She has no idea that she'll become a victim. She meant thinking of you. She seems she has no idea. If I can try again. She stares at the screens. Is she looking at herself in the mirror? What does she mean by try again? Let's get going. Let's? Is there someone else? She seems... very nervous. Yes. What is making her so nervous? With all this in mind, Firefly and her companion, there should only be one, have entered this corridor together. The situation has changed, and it seems that companion has deviated from the original plan. Perhaps, judging from the outcome, this is that person's true intention. forced her to go that way. And... Mecca? What an intriguing statement. I recall the Bloodhound family is pursuing a criminal. A tall male in silver armor. Based on these fragmented pieces of information, it seems Firefly's companion betrayed her halfway and trapped her alone in this room, disappearing without a trace. But... why? She mentioned that this transaction involves the Watchmaker, and that often means stepping on many people's toes. They might have had their eyes on the legacy, or wanted to silence another who knew too much. Or there could be a deeper secret tucked away in this memory zone. And to hook that elusive prize, one needs the right bait. Do you mean... Firefly? This is just the worst case scenario. But think about it. If the mastermind behind all this is nearby, why would he let us look around freely? Unless... There's something else he cares more about and needs. Or should I say, is verifying. She had no other way to leave but from the side corridor. The door! People, open! It's a dead end! 
Based on these fragmented pieces of information, it seems Firefly's companion betrayed her halfway and trapped her alone in this room, disappearing without a trace. But... Why? She mentioned they might have had... Do you mean... There's something else... There's actually a path here! Unpredictable pathways pointing toward a wandering meme. She was completely lost in the memory zone. Unfortunately, this path ultimately leads one to the layer of death. Finally, back in the lobby. If that's the case. She thought she had escaped, but after that, it's the end. Everyone, over there. It seems like someone has been awaiting us. Ready to step into the spotlight now. Stellaron Hunters. Down. 
You chose the wrong enemy. Grace and elegance return. I suppose every petal and all will be swept away by the wind. Yeah. Tedious. I'll see you off. All will be revealed. Thank you for your efforts, Memo Keeper. Quite a brilliant move to pit enemies against each other. When I first saw the Ranger and the Hunter together, my heart skipped a beat. <laughs> I never thought you'd successfully trigger a conflict between the two. As promised, I've delivered the child to you. Our transaction is complete. <laughs> Looks like our nameless friend over here is still confused. Let me explain. In short, you need to thank this lady here, my friend. Not only did she not betray you, on the contrary, she rescued you. From that galaxy ranger. Right. <laughs> I do enjoy seeing that shocked expression of yours. My friend, let's be honest. That woman named Acheron isn't as simple as you thought. Did she say she's a galaxy ranger? She's actually an emanator who brings death and finality.
she was there? Wait, what? <laughs> You're kidding. Oh my, this just got even more interesting. Let me give you some IPC insider information, my friend. Do you know Duke Inferno? Fatora's Ifrit? Nicely done. As expected. I'll cut to the chase then. This Duke Inferno is a fire demon from Fatora. He's an energy life form, and it's rumored that his birth is related to a certain genius. He and his thugs formed Everflame Mansion and viewed Nanook as their savior. In actuality, they were led by this duke to go around burning and looting, practicing the will of destruction. And even the other Annihilation gangs weren't spared. I'm not sure what the family was thinking, or perhaps someone was scheming behind the scenes. But, shockingly, these characters received an invitation. And why would the Everflame Mansion decline? They harbor fierce intentions, swearing to turn the planet of festivities into a sea of blazing flames. But there's no need to worry. <laughs> they won't be able to attend. Do you know why? Because Ifrit is dead. They were eliminated on their way. The assailant, demonstrating remarkable expertise, ruthlessly ended Ifrit and swiped the invitation that the Annihilation Gang had in their possession. The Everflame Mansion disbanded, each going their separate ways. Thereafter, a mysterious Galaxy Ranger arrived on Panicone, checking into the hotel with only a music box. <laughs> Do you still need me to continue the story, my friend? The Galaxy Rangers come and go like shadows, and there's little communication between them. Her story is almost too perfect. If she remains silent, there's no concrete evidence against her. While the IPC can investigate, it'll take some time. So, my friend, the choice is yours now. You can leave this place immediately, without looking back, and forever forsake the chance to get closer to the truth. Or, you can accept my invitation and learn a truth. A truth potent enough to upend everything in Panicone. I need your help. So I'll wait, but not for long. Once you are ready, follow me. As for aligning with me, see the truth first, then decide. You'll still have time. Acheron is the emanator of a particular eon. Uh, can I really believe aventuring? But he gave me a choice. Maybe I should talk to Black Swan again. My, my. You look like a small, injured animal. Are you still willing to talk to me? Of course, I'm still willing to be your psychotherapist. I still believe that Miss Firefly's situation is deeply connected with the Stellaron Hunter, just as we speculated. But, as you've heard, Aventurine has his finger pointed at the Galaxy Ranger. I can't fathom why he'd draw that conclusion, but given his access to the IPC's intelligence network, we should seriously consider his perspective. Moreover, I believe Miss Acheron is also hiding something. No. In fact, I should say she's hiding everything from us. 
It was an unexpected finding from an earlier encounter. With regards to the Annihilation Gang, I can also prove that what Aventurine said was the truth. That's why, during this golden soiree, she is the dance's centerpiece. My take on this might surprise you. In my view, he's a trustworthy individual. Not for any other reason, but because he's an exceptional businessman. In this vast universe, no one values honesty and contracts more than a merchant. But, always be on guard. Particularly when making agreements with him. Scrutinize the details. Beyond the confines of the contract, your rights are off his radar. He'll go to extreme lengths to ensure his advantage. Why, of course. But now is not the time. I know you're confused. And sad. Whoever that girl might have been. A living soul. A memory that was meant to last. She simply vanished. Like the dissolution of bubbles and water, disappearing in an instant. No matter what, I hope you can trust Aventurine. Or rather, trust me and see the truth with your own eyes. This can lead us deeper into the secrets behind Benaconi. I will protect you. Once I gather more information from him, I'll make sure you're safely returned to your companions. For the truth, and to prevent more unnecessary sacrifices, it is the right choice. Perhaps he plans on doing so, but I won't. The Garden of Recollection has eyes everywhere. If he wants to hurt you, he'll have to fight against the Memo Keepers. I've warned him about that. Later, I'll stay by your side as a memetic entity, just in case. Time to set off. Go and meet a Venturine, or I could still choose not to help. Excellent. I knew you would come. By the way, about that memo keeper... <sighs> Never mind. I won't press the issue further. I've said before you can liaise with your companions, or even twist the narrative against me. I'll wholeheartedly embrace it. It signifies your potential. I don't do deals where I'm on the losing end. So, my friends, don't let me down. Please, this way, if you will. Hmm. 
Danger. Danger. <sighs> Danger. Danger. Danger.
Oh, right. I remember mentioning something after that. What was it again? <laughs> a familiar hallway, a familiar room. Do you remember? The last time we met was right here. This is it. Just beyond this door. Take a deep breath and get ready. Oh, I remember. My friend. After that, we played an enjoyable game. Tell me, doesn't this feel eerily familiar? I remember everything now. This was what I told you at that time. Look, friend. The game has already begun. Allow me to make you an offer. One you can't refuse. No reason to choose otherwise. And no other choices. back. How is your preparation for the performance coming? It's fine. Don't worry. It's fine? <laughs> this is not good. You're the pride of the family. Don't let those unnecessary emotions affect your perfect pitch. I... no. Brother... You seem to be in low spirit. What's happened? Is it because of the watchmaker's guest list? Yes. I received the report that... Death had taken some of them. Perhaps someone was behind it. I'm sorry. I forgot you just came back. You probably wouldn't know about it. Somehow, a nightmare called Death has descended upon Panacone. Striking indiscriminately, bringing spiritual death to all equally. In the utopian dreamscape envisioned by the family, such sorrowful incidents shouldn't arise. It profoundly undermines the equilibrium and serenity of the dreamscape. How detestable. I can't believe this has happened. Was someone killed again? Yes. There were two. One was a stowaway, uh, the other... was you. That's enough, fool. Your deeds have saddened me. Pretty sharp, aren't you, chicken wing boy? The Odes of Harmony talks about honesty. The words of a fool begins with foolishness and end in treacherous arrogance. Please leave. Their dreamscape doesn't welcome you. Oh, come on, lighten up. Why so serious with all the quotations and references? 
I'm just curious. Now things have come to this. Is the family still unwilling to fight? I mean, your darling sister's already a goner, right? Really? <laughs> Don't tell me you're not craving a little vengeance. It's not yet time. When the fated day arrives, I shall meet out justice with unyielding righteousness. Wow, you can endure that much? Truly a heart of ice you've got there. Hey, maybe we could actually get along. How about this? I'll stand in for your dear sister at events. <laughs> Surely you don't want the world to hear the Charmony Festival's been called off. The family has a plan. And do not dishonor my dear sister with your deceitful tongue again, fool. All right, all right. Just putting it out there. If you're ever in a pinch, remember, I've got your back. I mean, who could resist a guy rocking spikes on his wings? <laughs> There's no need. The Malefactor has been exposed under their radiant gaze and will soon fall by their own machinations. Should the transgressor fail to turn away from this path, their sword will be honed, their bow strung, causing the malevolence the perpetrator spreads to befall them. And when that time comes, the heathen will realize they are but a mere mortal, doomed to descend into the netherworld. And I... I will join their vanguard to announce this good news to you personally. Watchmaker.
Danger. Identifying that person is crucial. It could be the key to making sense of everything. Hey, what brings you here, Rich? It's been so long. <laughs> I'm not that wonderful. Just okay. It's all taken care of. As long as the money's there, it's all good. Here's the account you asked for. It's legit and secure, allowing you to connect straight to the internet. Mm-hmm, sure. Can I help you with something? Oh, you flatter me. I'm just a peddler doing a little business on the side. Small scale. Best left under the table. But if you ever make it big in the guild, don't forget your humble friend, okay? Uh, again? How many times has it been? You're really pushing my buttons. Here too. My memories are just a jumbled mess of words. Did my memory piece together irrelevant information? Now I remember. The other person is Emily. She was at the base zone. What did Emily say? I say, what a wonderfully intelligent looking young lady. I'm not that wonderful. I'm just okay. No need to be modest. At my age, you get a feel for intelligence. Though, I confess, I did hear someone say you were the shining star of the Department of Insight. Mm hmm Sure. Can I help you with something? See this material here? People are so inconsiderate. How's someone like me supposed to make out the small print? I'm not getting any younger, and my eyesight is failing. Do you think you can... Uh, again? How many times has it been? You're really pushing my buttons.
another smart looking youngster. <laughs> Wonderful. It's about time we had some new recruits. Huh. Asta told you to find me? A curio that doesn't have a body but is alive. Isn't the Department of Ecology full of curio experts? That's got nothing to do with the Department of Insight. However, I've heard of such a species. A colleague who came back from a business trip said that the Sienjo Alliance has life forms like that. Uh, don't get me wrong, I was merely relaying information. I didn't mean I'd help you. <sighs> the atmosphere on the space station has been getting stranger lately. It's risky taking sides. The Sienjo species Emily mentioned it seems to be what inspired Adler. The disappearances Asta mentioned are likely related to Arlen's investigations too. The Sienjo species Emily mentioned it seems to be what inspired Adler. I figured you'd come to me to uncover the truth. I'm sorry. The situation is very delicate. I can't say anything except that it's a secret mission. Just as I thought. I vaguely remember that Arlen said more. It's related to the thing I forgot. I'm sorry. How did you know? I see. Could you also tell that Lady Asta was feeling the pressure? I'll be honest with you. It's been tough. The surveillance didn't capture anything regarding the researcher's disappearance. There's only one clue. Adler observed that the automatic fire suppression system was momentarily activated around the time the disappearances occurred. That means that every victim's disappearance was accompanied by some inexplicable fire. When we made visits to the scenes, some of the witness testimonies seemed to agree with this. The words they used were spontaneous combustion of the human body. Have you asked the Department of Ecology head? Huh, she's not wrong. But that doesn't feel entirely right either. Huh? What did I say? She's not wrong. Ah, that's right! They're called Heliobi! I guess you could say that Wubaboos and Heliobi are sort of like cousins. Both are types of energy life form. Huh. Now that you mention it, I have a wild hypothesis. But it needs verifying. Let's call it a day. Wait for me. I'll be in touch. Spontaneous combustion of the human body. That's most likely the truth. I need to go over it from the start. Starting with the conversation I had with Herda. Let me describe it again in case you forgot. It's an... It's alive, but it doesn't have a body. Send me a signal when you see traces of it. I think she mentioned something important, but... I can't remember. If only there were some hints, then maybe... Let me describe it again in case you forgot. It's an energy life form. It's alive, but it doesn't have a body. 
Send me a signal when you see traces of it. That's got the point. I wouldn't be bothering with it if it didn't have something to do with the Genius Society. Anyway, keep up the good work. I need to go out for a bit. Go ask Asta if you want someone to help you. I commend your stamina for recounting that interminable tale. You must be exhausted. My ears certainly are. So, to sum it up, the last time you laid eyes on Herta was in her office. She sent you on a wild goose chase for some trinket, the curio, after which you knew nothing else until Lady Asta contacted you. If that's the narrative you're sticking to, then indulge me. Who, pray tell, can substantiate this captivating drama? Affirmation. We can ask Herta herself. Well, if you lace up those boots and start sprinting now, you might just catch the IPC shuttle in four system hours. But as it stands, not a single soul can corroborate his story. Mr. Ratio, your style of questioning would seem to have a preconceived bias. Apologies, it's an unfortunate habit of mine. When one is immersed in academic research, skepticism comes far more naturally than belief. It is also the most efficient method, judging from my experience. Seeking answers with a negative hypothesis in mind is still valid research. It can still help us reach the truth. If he is truly innocent, he can clear his name with answers. Based on your story, you met with Herta because she specifically wanted you for an assignment. I remember now. Back then. Back then. That's enough pretend- Based on your story. If you knew Herta, then you wouldn't find it weird. Uh, don't interrupt other- uh. Based on your story, you met with Herta because she specifically- I remember now. That's enough- Based on your story, you met with her- I remember now. That's enough- Based on your story, you met with Herta because she specifically wanted you for an assignment, and the assignment involves a curio that doesn't even have a name. Herta's collection. An endless trove of trinkets and baubles. And yet, she singles out one nameless ordinary curio? Hmm. It's hard for me to imagine she would treasure one curio so much. I doubt Herta is interested in the curio- Based on your story. And the assignment involves a curio that doesn't even have a name. I remember now. That's enough pr and the assignment involves a curio that doesn't even have a name. Herta didn't mention the name of the curio. We were talking about something else and she just mentioned it in passing. However, she did give a thorough description of the curio. I didn't make that up. True. You wouldn't be able to make that up. Why do I feel like I'm being looked down on? And the assignment involves a curio that doesn't even have a name. Herta's collection. An endless trove of trinkets and baubles. And yet... I remember now. That's enough for Herta's collection. Sure. But you're the one saying the curio in question is ordinary. Say what you want to say. A correct observation, if I may add. Herta's collection. An endless trove of trinkets and bombs. The curio isn't the point. 
Herta was only addressing it because of its relation to the Genius Society. I would imagine the Curio is the creation of a genius. Affirmation, it holds some special meaning to Herta. Yes, that seems logically sound. Then you said you asked Asta for help with the lost Curio. Yes, to get more information about the Curio. I didn't get a direct answer, but Asta recommended I seek out a researcher who could help. Then you said you asked Asta for help with the lost Curio. I remember now. That's enough. Pre then you said you asked Asta. I remember now. That's enough. Then you said you asked Asta for help with the lost Curio. I remember now. That's enough. Pre then you said, however, she decided to hold her tongue until now. Mr. Ratio, it's because. I'm asking him, Lady Asta. Your testimony went out the window the second you started being secretive. However, she decided to hold her tongue until now? I remember now. That's enough protect- However, she decided to hold her tongue until- I remember now. That's enough protect- However, she decided to hold her- I remember now. That's enough protect- However, so what's the story? Are you full of fanciful fiction? Or is Asta the one hoarding secrets like they're going out of style? Asta isn't trying to hide anything. It's because of her position. Some things shouldn't be said in the open. What could be more important than her to safety? I agreed for Mr. Ratio to become involved in this. I should consider him one of us. It's okay. You can tell him. So what's the story? Are you full of fanciful fiction? Or is Asta the one? I remember now. That's enough prot- So what's the story? The space station has been very distrustful of its higher management. Ever since the Antimatter Legion's invasion. Another severe incident would further intensify suspicion. And cause great internal strife. Oh. So that explains why Lady Asta approved of my participation. After all, the Intelligentsia Guild's representative wouldn't be linked to the space station, but would still share the IPC's position. They wouldn't be partial to anyone, but would still act for the space station's benefit. Two birds with one stone. Researchers' disappearances, you say? Yes, I've heard the responsibility of sorting out that mess has been thrust upon Arlen, head of the security department. Yes. I ran into Arlen when looking for Adler. Adler? A level two researcher. According to the Department of Ecology head, he knows more about curios than anyone else. He happened to be helping Arlen investigate the disappearances. Well, did he enlighten you? Adler seemed to have an idea at the time, but he never contacted me again. Researchers' disappearances, you say? Clearly, though, it bears no connection to Herta's puppet being attacked. No connection? I disagree. There should be evidence linking them together. If I review a certain record... Clearly, though, it bears no connection to Herta's... No. If I recall correctly, Asta said... One of Madame Herta's puppets was attacked by an unknown perpetrator. We don't know the location of the puppet, and we can't pinpoint its signal. Don't know the location. Isn't that the same as missing? She did say that. But then what? You need to provide evidence to show incidents are linked. There should be evidence. Arlen discovered something odd when he was investigating the disappearances. The space station's automatic fire suppression system was momentarily activated around the time the disappearances happened. Arlen mentioned that each victim disappeared due to spontaneous combustion. But 
there are no signs of a fire anywhere in the space station. That's what's so odd about it. But this information has an additional layer of importance. This may not be direct evidence, but if the system also recorded the fire suppression system activating when the puppet was attacked, then there's ample evidence to indicate that these two cases are linked. If these two incidents were caused by the same person, then the suspicion put on you would decrease, provided that this fire suppression record does exist in the system. We'll see in the main control room. Let's go. Uh, huh? What was that? This is an urgent broadcast. I repeat, this is an urgent broadcast. News has finally emerged regarding the attack on Madame Herta. The Annihilation Gang has claimed responsibility for the incident and warned of further activity. The Guild has expressed utmost condemnation. <laughs> the gods of the starry skies have abandoned the world. They give no thought to the masses. Only the wounded savior can bathe the world in the firelight of destruction. Yet always there are cowards trying in vain to reject their favor and escape the wounds. Flee then. Flee as far as you can. No matter the distance, annihilation will find you. This is... A declaration of war. And an announcement of what's to come. They have set their sights on you. The Legion's impact remains. And the Annihilation Gang is already paying a visit. It almost seems like this space station is more suited for the path of destruction than erudition. This Duke Inferno Ifrit is a life form that hails from Fatora. A world long since destroyed. His race, the ever-burning fire demons, regard Nanook as their emperor and savior, but the Eon has never cast their gaze upon them. A group of pitiful lunatics. I like Dr. Primitive's assessment of them. The value Nanook sees in the Annihilation Gang is perhaps far less than one might see in a child who deliberately broke a vase. The Fire Demons have a cruel temper and instinctively ignite and destroy items. Ifrit is particularly evil and cruel, even among his kin. The Everflame Mansion he heads is even the archenemy of the Japella Brotherhood, despite both groups belonging to the Annihilation Gang. Japella Brotherhood? I've heard that name somewhere. On the Stellaron Hunters Wanted posters, they stand accused of inciting the Japella Rebellion, the uprising that caused the downfall of the Brotherhood. The Japella Palace crumbled in the scorching flames, and Ifrit's power has grown by the day ever since. Would you believe it would be merely a coincidence? Something similar is about to happen here. Spontaneous combustion? For him, it's as routine as me finding fault in everything. The disappearance of researchers and the puppet were all part of the plan. And after that, that video will soon circulate. And this station's fate? Flames. Nothing but flames. The destruction of trust. I'm afraid more than trust will be destroyed here. You need to start acting now if you want to survive. You, come with me.
You have a superior strategy? Pray tell, do we set the two of them loose, turning whispered fears into full-blown pandemonium? If we did that, we'd be at a disadvantage. I'll stay here and try to contain the news as best I can. Please, investigate the issue quickly. Where there are people, there is noise. Not good. This is serious. The security department will do whatever we can to help you. A list of the missing researchers and their details. Sure, but the security department already combed through their backgrounds and personal relationships. We didn't find anything odd. The Annihilation Gang are a group of die-hard thugs. They might be attacking indiscriminately. A list of the missing researchers and their details. Okay. Take it. Remember these names. Find a friend who's tuned into the gossip around here and tell them you want to know the relationship between these people. I don't know. That depends on your friend. What else do you need me to do? Take me to the one who knows the most about curios within the Department of Ecology, if you would be so kind. <sighs> he... he disappeared too. I didn't really notice at first. Adler's difficult to get a hold of at the best of times. But it's been a few system hours and I still can't reach him. Even the surveillance cameras can't find any trace. The last time I saw him was in the Master Control Zone. He was with Wen Shirling from the Department of Implement Arts. Lead the way. You said Adler was on the verge of the discovery, yet couldn't confer his knowledge. Intriguing and frustrating, to say the least. If his disappearance is also related to the case here, then maybe he really did stumble upon something... important. True. The keywords that got Adler thinking were energy life forms. Duke Inferno is also an energy life form. Coincidence? We need to investigate this. Jerk! 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 
jerk, jerk! Fine! Disappear! I don't ever want to see your face again! Adler, he... he disappeared! <laughs> he, he's been acting really weird recently. Always researching stuff like spontaneous combustion, supernatural activities. He doesn't even answer me when I speak to him. He, he was talking to himself. What did he talk about? He kept saying the word phrase. Phrase. Who said I want him back? But if you want to find him, he was reading this booklet the last time I saw him. I don't know exactly what he's searching for, but I hope it can help you. suggests tragedy. So the researchers who disappeared were at the forefront of challenging management. Isn't that a curious puzzle piece? I finished browsing through this booklet while you were replying to messages. It recorded the lives of a few Genius Society members. I'd say it contains some interesting information. It's time to go back and chat with Lady Asta and Mr. Screwlum. Monitoring the dark web. I barely managed to stop the video from spreading. The incident hasn't grown any bigger, for now. How are things with you? <sighs> Less than promising. Or to use a different phrase, we're in deep trouble. We're running out of time. Let's retrace our steps and evaluate the situation. From the data we've collected, there are three avenues we can explore. First, Adler's disappearance. He must have come across some vital information. I understand. Tenuous connection. First. Adler also. You think that Adler's discovery drew the enemy's attention? Indeed. And I already know what he found. First. Adler's disappearance. The next angle is what the victims have in common. 
distasteful disgust. A mere glance at their background would indicate they share no commonalities. However, after browsing through their- Lady Asta must know what this means. Hmm. The next angle, last, is the- You probably already know about the Fire Demon of Fatora. Last, is the abilities- during prior unrest, instigated by the Everflame Mansion, some testified to seeing miscreants materialize from the Inferno. The flickering tongues of Duke Inferno's fire carrying a certain property, and this property is the secret behind spontaneous human combustion. Look, the answer is right there. This booklet describes a kind of fire that can phase through dimensions, claiming it burns through worlds, leaving numerous scions of flame behind. It's the phase flame, the creation of member number 29, Sir Karl. She was an amazing genius, intelligent, kind, and humble. However, she lived for a mere 29 days on the human calendar. Such a pity. The phase flame shifted into a different phase as soon as it was created. When it returned to this phase, Sir Karl had already passed away. It then continued to shift through phases, making its capture impossible. This booklet describes a kind of fire that can phase the kindling of this unique flame. Must be the missing curio that Hurt has been searching for. Somebody was once able to glimpse the traces of the Phase Flame. If Ifrit is a scion of the Phase Flame, then the entire incident is now clear as day. The kindling of this unique fl- I fear that this- Undoubtedly, the Curio and Adler already discovered the relationship between spontane- I fear that this is the truth Adler discovered. I understand. Tenuous connect- I fear that this is the truth Adler discovered. When Sherling said, Adler kept muttering about a phrase before he disappeared. I believe this word was actually phase. He saw member 29 Sir Call's research topic in this booklet and verified his hypothesis. As a scion of the phase flame, Duke Inferno would naturally share similar capabilities. Full on phase shifting may be a bit too ambitious for him, but Teleportation? That's likely more his speed. That is the truth of the spontaneous human combustion. The researchers didn't disappear. They were moved. We don't know where the victims went, but Duke Inferno's plan is now clear. And the sudden and consecutive disappearances provided the best environment for chaos to fester. Once the seed of unrest has sprouted, he will then send out an announcement for an imminent attack. It will push the crisis from the dark into the light, catalyzing it into new growth and bloom. The next step would be to ignite the spark. Look at those researchers who disappeared. What would happen if someone realized their similarities? I need say no more. It was all a premeditated trap to stir up chaos on the space station. We're running out of time. This... No, it isn't enough. Indeed, it needs one more spark. What do you mean? If you limit your involvement to this, there's still room for excuses. If it were me, I wouldn't give you the chance. Uh, 
Could it be? Huh? What is it? Stay calm. Asta was merely teleported. Her life was not in danger. Based on first-hand experience, I have ascertained that Ifrit's flame is simply a splinter of the primordial phase flame, lacking any phase shift ability. Logic. Asta is still within the confines of the space station. That flame must still be somewhere inside the station. Find it, and we'll find a way to bring her back. <laughs> a splinter, you say? The arrogance of the gifted is charming in its own way. Try then if you must. It seems that Duke Inferno didn't deign to personally grace the space station. He merely cast Infernal Fire into our midst to wreak havoc among the researchers. When the fire fizzles out, his malevolent plans will vanish without a trace. I will head to Herta's office and activate the folded space in the Curio storage room. With some changes to its parameters, I can use it to block the fire's teleportation routes and seal it inside the station. Mr. Ratio, please go with Mr. Trailblazer and contain the fire. An enemy worthy of your attention is a formidable enemy. Infernal fire is also a form of energy life form. The imaging device will pick up its trace. Follow it. The way is awash with flames. It must have just teleported. Be careful. Get ready to dash into the fire. It's still in the space station. Like Skrillam said, it cannot escape from here. Do you know what to do with Cornered Prey? Hunt it to the death. Space has shifted. I can deduce its escape route with a mere glance.
The dead return! as my calculations predict. as my calculations predicted. Duke Inferno can't maintain it anymore. Seems like this chase is about to end.
calculations predicted. <sighs> it's over. Ignorant fools blindly chasing the firelight, not knowing that the blessings of destruction already lie at their feet. It is been a wonder that even the descent of the Savior's Legion was unable to cleanse this place. I will acknowledge my brashness. For but next time, expect no intermediaries. I will come to personally offer you the demise of your sins with infernal fire. A small fragment of consciousness in there is gone. Duke Inferno has discarded this fire. Oh? No. Hold on. Banal theatrics of stalling. Let's not, shall we? <laughs> materializing from the Inferno. Seems like Dr. Primitive was the wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the dead return!
Good work. You did very well. Rest assured, Asta only had a fright. She is recovering in the clinic. While you were chasing the enemy, the security department also found the missing researchers. Affirmation, they are all safe and sound. It was all thanks to Adler. They fell into a spatial curio and could not leave until the Department of Ecology's most knowledgeable curio expert solved it from within. Many of them were shaken by their experience when Arlen found them, but they are otherwise fine. Yes, it is over. This business is over, and I believe the space station will be able to deal with any internal aftershocks. In her stead, I thank you for your efforts, sir. But there is one mystery that remains unsolved. <laughs> and that is something I must deal with myself. Fallout from this incident remains. Surely you have plenty of pressing matters to attend to. Or is the safety of the space station beneath your concern? Answer. That is exactly why I came. After all, the principal figure in this whole affair is right here. <laughs> when did you start to doubt me? When one is immersed in academic research, skepticism comes far more naturally than belief. I've had the same bad habit as you since the beginning, Mr. Ratio. I must say, I'm quite honored, Mr. Scrulum. But do explain, why opt for silent wisdom when you already had the pieces of the puzzle? For curiosity's sake, Affirmation. I made the same decision as you, to accompany and observe. Oh, and when did you become convinced? Objectively speaking, aside from some minor spiritual trauma, no researchers were hurt in this attack, which never aligned with the Annihilation Gang's modus operandi. Logic? A third party saved them. Had I not fortuitously acquired a spark of the phase flame and intervened in Duke Inferno's teleportation, those people would already be space waste, floating past the windows here. You are more candid than I calculated but still behaving within your calculations, no? One last question, Skrullum. Genius though you are, can you deduce why I did this? I cannot be sure and can only hypothesize. Helping the weak hints at the merciful instinct of a medical doctor but maintaining a cool, detached observation reveals the strictness of a scholar. And pulling the strings from behind the curtain is akin to laying down the gauntlet to a genius. The ruler of planet Skrulum is indeed well versed in the human mind. It's a pity you're as much in the ivory tower as other geniuses you still got one thing wrong. To stand aside and observe is the best treatment one can give. There is a disease called foolishness that is harder to cure than any ailment. The path of erudition has neither reason nor logic. 
While geniuses wander among the stars, the ordinary can't even trace their footsteps. Those less gifted have no choice but to walk alone, enduring a lifetime of tumbles and triumphs. But even a life marked by failure is a life worth living. It is only in moments of solitude and despair when help is absent that fools grasp how to pick themselves up. I have a fastidious nature. I cannot stand fools, idiots, or imbeciles. Seeing them fills me with dread. Regrettably, this space station is just like the Intelligentsia Guild, devoid of geniuses and filled with mediocrity. You wish to uproot the researcher's blind worship of geniuses. I am only laying out my questions. As for the answers, they'll find them themselves. Pursuit tinged with negativity is still pursuit, and it is capable of leading us to the right conclusion. For the masses of the mediocre to reach a level of awareness, this is a necessary rite of passage. You are indeed more like a medical doctor than a scholar. As for the spark I leave behind, I believe Asta will deal with it properly. It is also a lesson I left for her. With that, I take my leave. I look forward to future encounters with such brilliant minds. Let's hope they're as memorable as those we had today. <sighs> A farce full of trivial concerns. Ultimately, they're just mediocre minds. Thank you. 